Um, what do you think the relationship is between compassion and love? And you know, we've talked about con cultivating compassion. What is love after that? Well, I think that's a very interesting question um, because love really is, in, well, in the 12 blessings, mm. when the Master Jesus talks about love, it is so different mm. from what people normally think of yeah. as being love. Um, and they who love, the Master Jesus actually says, they love not any man because they love all. Mm. So what he's meant by that is that the kind of love that he's talking about is very impersonal. Mm. very unconditional. It's not about like and dislike. You can love someone without liking them. Mm. You could <laughs> give spiritual healing to your worst enemy uh, and in no way be condoning whatever wrong thing they've done to you. Mm. You're not judging them on what they've done. You're helping them as a fellow spark of the divine. Yeah. So how would someone cultivate a greater and greater love within themselves that they can imbue in their prayer? I think it's a very difficult thing to do. Mm. Um, obviously, it's a case of practice makes perfect. So the mm. more you practice uh, with the right motive, mm. then the better your prayers will be mm. and the higher the quality of love energy will be. Because mm. love is an energy. Mm. In fact, it's been described by a great master as the one energy. Mm. Um, it is integral to all life, even even when it seems like it really isn't, you know, when you look at um, <laughs> some of the awful things yeah. that go on. Um, but actually, love is at the core of manifestation itself. Mm. Uh, all spiritual practices will help to manifest a greater love. Mm. And I think it's not a very fashionable word, but I think you cannot separate mm. true love from sacrifice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, sacrifice is absolutely key to real love, because if there's no sacrifice, then you, you have to ask yourself, is it really love? Yeah. Or is it just attachment, yeah. ordinary desire, like yeah. and dislike? Yeah, even just a part of your identity. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. When uh, the Master Jesus, I think, is in the fifth blessing, he's talking about the thanksgivers. And I'm paraphrasing, but he talks about how um, these ones are constantly transmuting prana into love energy and radi radiating that outwards. So, so I think, well, one, one theme of the Twelve Blessings is, and one theme of life, yeah. real spiritual life, which is the only life that really counts, is taking a basic energy and putting it onto a higher level. Right. That's yeah. what transmutation is. Mm. That's what white magic is. Mm. That's what all true um, metaphysics is about mm. when put into practical action. Taking something basic, putting it onto a higher level. Mm. Taking a sad song and making it better. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the 12 Blessings is a vehicle for doing that. For anyone absolutely, can practice. I mean, absolutely, 100%. The Twelve yeah. Blessings is one of the greatest vehicles mm -hmm. for doing that. Um, we are ordinary people. Right. We are not advanced masters. Uh, we can't enter, can't yet enter the, the, the higher states of meditation. Mm. But we can all practice the Twelve Blessings. And it, it really is at the essence of true karma yoga that we're taking... You know, for example, when we eat, you can eat because you just really like the food. Yeah. yeah? Which I do. Or, yes, well, <laughs> me too, actually. But um, the correct metaphysical reason to eat mm. is to nourish the body so that you can be of service to others. Right. So there you're taking um, matter, mm. consuming it for your your physical survival so that you can do something on a spiritual level mm. and there in that way your whole life yeah. can become one of transmutation yeah, it's like everything is serving that purpose absolutely in the end. absolutely yeah. at a higher level of evolution everything every thought every action revolves around divinity mm. it reminds me of um, a, a lecture by dr king who's talking about the thing is the cult secrets of the master jesus 
and how everything he did was just for the one big thing that he had to achieve in his life and everything was for that purpose to speak. everything was in preparation absolutely for that. and you look I mean when you're talking about a, a master like the master Jesus then it's on another level entirely as mm. well mm. because remember that the master Jesus didn't even need to be here right. at all so uh, the whole every breath, every breath he took yeah. Um, f right from the moment of his birth um, was about service. Yeah. Every single second of experience on this earth was a sacrifice because mm. he could have been somewhere much, much better, mm. being treated much, much better. I mean, it brings us right back to the theme of sacrifice that you were talking about in the Absolutely. beginning. I mean, <laughs> just their very presence here could have been I mean, even that is so tremendous, but the fact that then there was then a mission on top of it, which was so profound is... Well, is I think this is something that I came to me very strongly on Mount Baldy in okay. America, one of the holy mountains uh, charged by Mars Sector 6, uh, was that we think of Mars Sector 6 as um, being extremely authoritative mm. and... Um, very a very powerful intelligence, uh, obviously extremely wise. Uh, we tend to think of Mars Sector Six, I think, in almost a disciplinarian role. Completely, yeah, I agree. With that. Um, this is a master who you would not want to contradict in any way or make a mistake. No, <laughs> you, you really wouldn't. And of course, all the cosmic masters are compassionate, mm. but. It, for me personally, it's not the first thing that would have sprung to my mind in describing Mars Sector 6. But when I was on Mount Baldy, and of course the energy is from him, mm. the feeling I got more than any other was the incredible love. And to say it's unconditional love doesn't really even begin to do it justice because it's the kind of love that we on Earth just don't really know. Mm. Uh, there is literally nothing that they would not do for us. Mm. They do far more for us than we even do for ourselves. Oh, yeah. They care far more about our well-being than we care about our own. Mm. This is the kind of psychology that we're talking about uh, with the Cosmic Masters. And I, I was very pleased to have that experience on Mount Baldy because I think it helped to mm. slightly correct um, a wrong approach I had to this to great things. being. Mm. Uh, it made my my attitude that a little bit less limited, mm. I think, just to try and appreciate actually that's what it's really about. Yes, they're great scientists. Mm. Yes, they have tremendous power, tremendous authority, but at the end of the day, it's really about the fact that they love us. Mm. Simple as that. Because if they didn't, none of the other stuff would matter. Yeah.